coercion is um, a term used when medical professionals force you to do something without an explanation. Well, let me tell you something that ever happened to me. I went in informal and ended up on a section three. Heading for the door, as you may have done before. They said, now look here, mister. Look here, mister, and see. You're detained under the mental health act. Come on, everybody. It's time to come in. Andy. Yeah, come yeah, on, I'll break so I'll just be a minute. I've just got a couple more to do. I'll be right there. Yeah, yeah, I'm Come hurrying. On. Yeah, I'm hurrying. I'm, I'm as fast as I can. Break's over. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be there. Andy. Come on, how many times do I have to tell you to come in? I'm nearly done. Coercion also means to me being ignored, not listened to. I think that word is not a nice word because I think if you, if you force a person into something that you don't want to do, I think it's not a nice thing to do to a person. Although I think I've had coercion through being given not the right information, kind of being kept in the dark. They tell you that you've got to take medication, that schizophrenia is incurable, that um, um, you've got to take it permanently. But when I see the evidence, groups like the Critical Psychiatry Group and R.D. Lang, different groups, challenge that. Lots of people have got off it and have moved on from it. And um, you know, The medication has got lots of nasty side effects. For instance, uh, I've got diabetes type 2 the last 10 years. That's supposed to be a, a side effect of, a potential side effect of antipsychotic medication. Eight people held me down and took my trousers down and injected me in the bottom and I didn't come round until hours later when I woke up and I was in the ward. Come Michelle, I'm going to give you an injection now to help you to calm down. Come on Michelle now, the more you struggle the harder it's going to be for us to help you now. Why are you doing this? You're good. You're fine Michelle, don't worry. Um, if you can't Get what you, if you can't get proper care and proper and uh, freedom to move and do what you want, I think that's coercion. I haven't in the sense of um, some of my clients in the sense of medication and with um, being not you know forced to do something, um, but I have in the sense of lack of choice. I mean, when I was in hospital, even though I went in voluntarily, I actually wasn't aware that meant I can leave the ward um, for a walk. And also about choices about what I could do after I left hospital. Um, those are the things that weren't given to me. It was like there's a day centre, you have to go to it, and that was, that was it. The problems at the moment, I think it's very much to do with um, how people 
imagine mental health is. And I think, as someone was saying earlier, the tablets themselves can make you seem, you know, iller than you probably are, or differently ill to how you are. And, um, I mean, I think very often a G the GPs don't really know what to do, and they're probably discouraged from putting you onto secondary um, services because of funding. What do you want? It's like I told you downstairs, I don't, I don't need an assessment. I'm afraid you need to be looked after. But I'm, I'm looked after here, my family, they look after me. I spoke to someone at the hospital um, a few weeks ago and I can't remember what his name was, but he said that because I've got my family, I don't need any extra help. You need to be assessed. But I'm fine because my, my sister, she looks after me and she makes sure I take my medicine every morning and then when she comes in from work as well, I take my medicine. So I, I don't need... This is my home. I, I need to be here. I don't. I can't be taken with you. You think you're fine, but you're not, and that's the part of the problem. But no, because if I, I call my sister, and and she can tell you because she looks after me. And if I find her number, and then I'm being detained on the mental health act. <laughs> I was pregnant and I was my I was actually living in supported housing at the time and my support worker came round to my house and um basically said that she didn't think that I was very well and that I needed to go to hospital. I didn't really understand what was happening to me. Um I it was completely against what I wanted. My major concern was protecting my unborn baby. Um, so I went to the door to try to leave and a nurse came up to me and said, you can't leave the ward, that you're detained under the Mental Health Act. And that was a really, really terrifying experience because I knew that I had no control left over what was going to happen to me. Over a period of time, um, my thoughts about what, what happened to me then um, has sort of like changed and I've become immune to the the um, system of the times of um, admissions and it happening to me over and over again. Um, I've become dull really and so you know like I, I don't know what I feel about it, indignant really. And that was just, it's, it's almost impossible to describe that feeling of somebody just completely making you do what they say that you have to do, which included taking medication, which I knew was, was wrong for me and in particular for the child. People don't have the, the enough confidence to build their self-esteem up. And I see it's not all about taking, you know, medication. It's about this person is a human being and I treat them as a human being, you know, when I go in the wards. I know they have to take medication when they come out, but I turn them into a different model, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm different with them. I think it's all about their dignity. And that's why they'll come and talk to me. Excuse me, mate. Could I have a cigarette, please? No, not now. But I haven't had one for over two hours. Look, you're going to go out to the back in about an hour. Okay, you sure? Yeah, in an hour. Okay. Right, it's been an hour. Can I have my cigarette now, please? Mate, there's just not enough staff at the moment. You're going to have to come back in a bit. But I have to have my nicotine. You're going to have to come back in a bit, all right? But I 
needs one now. All right. People should be able to engage in lots of different kinds of treatment and the offer should be there, you know, like such as talk therapy and um, different kind of medication, choices of medication, ex being explained to, um, be given uh, chill out times, cooling down periods. I've always been able to say to mental health services, I'm not feeling very well and I need help. But at the time, they just took any choice away that I could possibly have had um, and made all the choices for me. And that was just, it's, it's almost impossible to describe that feeling of somebody just completely making you do what they say that you have to do, which included taking medication, which I knew was, was wrong for me and in particular for the child. I ended up having a miscarriage at the um, end of that experience and I don't think that would have happened if it wasn't for mental health services taking that choice away. In my experience, um, I don't think coercion is ever needed. Um, you know, I know the argument is, is that if someone is endangering themselves or others that there, there is a need. But I've seen working with the clients that I work with, because um, I work with people who have severe mental health issues, that um, you seem to get further if you actually give choices and let them come to the decision by themselves. Yes, it may take longer um, and you need a lot of patience, but I think the what happens after that is that they stay stable for longer. Whereas people that are coerced or, you know, some people say they've been conned, like they've been, you know, offered something in return for doing something, that they actually go back either as an impatient or go into crisis much sooner. So I don't, you know, I'm no doctor, but I don't, you know, on the ground level, I don't think it's necessary at all. I think... By telling people a bit more about what the effects and side effects of these medications, of adopting the code of the CRPD, Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities, and um, yeah, to maybe exp to explain them their human rights when they when they become a patient. I give them my private space with me, and I think. Um, and I show them a lot of respect and I say spend an hour with me in the ward and see where you are. And I try to bring them out of that. It might take me more than an hour, it might take me two hours, it might take me three hours, I don't care, I'll sit, you know, with them to see where they are. And it's a fantastic job. Sometimes you think you're by yourself Sometimes you think you're all alone Then you speak to another And you find that he's your brother And you're not alone Oh, you're not alone Sometimes you think you're by yourself Sometimes you think you're all alone Then you speak to another And you find that he's your brother And you're not alone no. Oh, no, you're not alone Oh Sometimes 
Sometimes you just can't find a friend Sometimes you just can't find a friend Sometimes it's just too much to make